strange begins in you and me. We changed the world around us when the change begins within. So let the change begin. Let the change begin. Let the change begin within. Spiritual Life Center has had many angels working in many disguises, but always showing up just at the right moment, supporting the new growth of this dynamic ministry. This garden, this garden of diversity and love. Albert Einstein said, there's two ways that you can live your life. One as though nothing is a miracle and the other is that everything is a miracle. Today, we come together to celebrate a miracle. We celebrate the creation of a brand new ministry, a ministry 
that has a divine destiny in your life and in the lives of the people in this community and beyond. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you have done and will do to make this dream a reality. Peace, wisdom, the assurance of well-being, these and so much more are ours as we experience God's presence and pray together. Let us pause during this holy time for communion with our blessed Creator. As I open my heart to your sacred presence, dear God, I am filled with renewed awareness of life and the joy of living. My heart, my mind, my very soul is open to you, God. I want to know you more, blessed spirit. I want to love you more, and I want to experience you in everything I do. As I open the door of myself to you, I feel your presence. You are the strength and courage I need to move beyond any difficulty. The things that trouble me are floating away, making way for your peace. I know that I can rely on you to uphold me, to comfort me, to keep me strong and secure. Nothing can separate me from your loving spirit. It wells up from within me as peace overflows into every area of my life. Even now, I breathe deeply and open the floodgates of my heart and soul to your sweet, sweet peace. No matter what I do, no matter where I go, your peace is always within me, always around me. Blessed peace, sweet peace. It fills me now as I relax in the silence. In the quietness of this blessed moment, I feel your sacred presence too, as love, love that is wisdom and inspiration. Your love alerts me to new possibilities and to new ways of living and loving and learning. We are so deeply blessed by your eternal love and presence in our lives and in the world. Amen. As a minister, when I look out at the Spiritual Life Center congregation on Sundays, I feel such gratitude. In every face, I see the face of God, and it moves me to tears, and I say, thank you, God. Here we are, 25 years later. Happy anniversary. What a wonderful way to begin our evening with such good memories of how everything started 25 years ago and how wonderful to, to see Faith and Michael's faces up there. 
How wonderful to see some of the other faces that were in that video in this room as well. I'm glad you're all here. This gives us the opportunity to stand together, sit together for a Spiritual Life Center's 25 years of transforming lives, of making a positive difference in our world as we love, serve, and remember. Of course, we had to start everything out with Michael and Faith because that was the beginning and we continue to honor them as we move forward, probably always will. There are some other people we're going to honor this evening as well, the people who have brought us to this point, this 25th anniversary. Some of those people, you know, I look around the room and I see more lays than not. And that's a wonderful thing. It just shows how active so many people are in this congregation, in this community. If you're wondering what the color scheme is, I can fill you in on that. The purple lays are the Fundamission people. The blue lays are our sponsors for the evening. And the white lays are volunteers and staff. So you'll know how to identify each other. By the way, if you want to check out more about Fun Division, you can find those people with those lays on at the table outside this evening. There's also the possibility of checking out Fund Mission later on on the website, but you know how that goes. If you wait, say you'll look at the website later, you won't. So just take care of it and talk to them this evening. <laughs> For a 25th anniversary, we are honoring 11 years and counting with our senior minister, Reverend James Trout. You're kind of popular around here. <laughs> And you notice those two words in there, and counting. <laughs> the 11 years were exciting and meaningful, but what comes next is even better. We know that. We're glad you're part of it. Last year, our Light the World honorees celebrated our founding minister, Faith Moran, along with three other extraordinary women in our midst. That event was held separately from the gala celebration. It was at the California Museum, and a lot of, not a lot of people got to that event. So we're going to share with you some of what happened at that event. We're going to spend the next 15 minutes being inspired by the stories of three people. Jan Adrian, Carol Van Bruggen, and Ann Roach. <laughs> and a little update on Jan Adrian. She's written a new book. She'll be at Spiritual Life Center on Sunday, October 22nd for a book signing. So make sure you're here on that day. To kick off this segment, how about a little music? Do 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 It's time to come together, you and I, and share our love and shine our light. We can make a difference. We can make a change. We can make the world a better place. We can make a difference. We can make a change. We can make the
infectious. At the time that Jan was diagnosed with cancer, the options were a lot different than they are today. The doctors were pretty good at the physical part of the treatment, but Jan understood what a lot of us now know, that healing the whole person is much more than those doctors were able to give her at that time. And when you can't find what you need, you make it. And that's what Jan did. She created this organization. She created Healing Journeys. And this conference for 25 years to do this work of total healing. At past conferences, as you heard Jan say, she was the MC. But it's different this time. She doesn't often share her story. So we are honored to hear from her today as a speaker. Please welcome Jan Adrian. I've been living with cancer for 29 years. And somebody, several people, have convinced me recently that 29 years of living and thriving with cancer is something worth talking about and could be inspirational to others. Because of my training as a psychiatric social worker and my lifelong interest in psychology and spirituality, I've not depended exclusively on treatments that focus on the body. I've used an integrative approach with more emphasis on healing than curing. Another one of those strategies that has been important for me is having strong reasons for living. 
and healing journeys has been a big part of that for me the last 25 years. I felt like I had been given an assignment and my life had new meaning. That's when I started the nonprofit organization called Healing Journeys and produced the first Cancer as a Turning Point from Surviving to Thriving conference. My first diagnosis was a turning point for me and it gave me a new career and has given me the opportunity to make a positive difference in the lives of thousands of people. And it has given meaning and purpose to my life for the past 25 years. I believe we are spiritual beings on a human path and my spiritual life is very important to me. And I can use whatever washes up on my beach to deepen and develop my spiritual life. So I will continue with focused intention, but I can't be addicted to the outcome. Namaste. The Hope Fund began in 2000, year 2000, and it actually began because of something that Steve and I did at SLC. We had gone on a trip to Africa and went to a school and became so excited about trying to help with education and conservation there in Zambia that we came back and we asked people at SLC if they would help raise funds for something that people needed very badly, and those were solar flashlights. Solar flashlights so people could see at night, so the children could study at night, and to keep the elephants away from their crops. So we did a fundraiser at SLC, and we took back hundreds of solar flashlights and gave them out at numerous villages. And that is when Africa Hope Fund began. I determined that there were not a lot of churches I wanted to attend because I had tried many, many different religious experiences. And SLC was a very accepting community, um, a very open community, and one that I felt very comfortable in. And it's probably to this day where some of my best friends have come from. Safari on the River is an event that we've had six times now. It is one of those events where people can come and they can learn about some of our work, uh, not only in the schools and libraries, uh, sponsorships of kids, but about conservation and why it's important and why we should even care about what happens so very far away in Africa, how that affects us all. It is one of our many fundraisers, but it is more than anything a friend raiser. When we first went to Africa, uh, one of my first friends there uh, runs a conservation organization. She showed me a school that she was supporting. But what I was really interested in was her work in saving animals from poaching. I realized uh, we could save animals and stop poaching for short periods of time, but if we didn't start with the children and show them why it was important to protect their natural resources and their wildlife, then it was gonna keep happening over and over and over again. So what we did is we started raising funds for anti-poaching and we've done things like support detection dogs that would find uh, and track down poachers. We started building classrooms and working with conservation organizations such as Chip and Belly, which uh, several people within SLC have supported. And uh, we, uh, we built seven libraries at seven different schools. We now support 27 reading assistants and we provide um, uh, funds to numerous uh, conservation organizations for anti-poaching and training. Um, one of the things that we're really excited about is we have volunteer trips 
where people will go over and they'll actually work with our reading assistants and work with the kids and it makes a huge difference in the kids' lives. Our schools now, with those seven libraries attached to the schools, are the best performing schools in all of Zambia. So we're very proud of that. When I started working in Zambia and I started raising funds for different projects, it brought me a lot of joy but more than anything, it was like it was my job. It was my, my calling. It was my calling. And there's a song in SLC that we, um, that we sing often, and it's about having our higher power use us, use me. And that was something that I often sang, and I often prayed, and I feel that this was the answer to that. I honestly like don't remember a time I wasn't a musician. I um you know, I was singing since I could stand. I started, you know, performing on stage at the young age of three, and it was just like this snowball into this whole world of performing and singing. So it wasn't a becoming, it was a I am. My musical journey evolved from the I to the we to the you. I'm gonna explain that. So as a young musician and performer, it was all about me. And you know, I love the applause, love the attention. And so it was all about how can I get this recognition from something. So it was all about me, my focus was on the I. When I stepped into music ministry, it became about the we. It was no longer about the I, it was the, <clears throat> the unit, the music ministry as a whole, the community as a whole, the group as a whole. So it transitioned from the I into this is a we now. It is a whole organism. It's not just one. And then that just so eloquently and naturally evolved into the you. How can I use what I have now to affect you? How do I make your life better? How do I, how do I use this gift of music that I've been given to affect you? To, to love you, to help heal you, to you know fill in the blank. So I was raised in Colorado. Within two weeks of my daughter being born, we moved to Waco, Texas, and I had no support system, didn't know anybody. I was like, I need spiritual food. I was so hungry for it when I moved to Sacramento that um, immediately I just went through the yellow pages and I found in interdenominational, undenominational churches and I asked them to send me literature. Well, Christ Unity Church was the first thing I got in the mail and I just kind of felt this rush of energy and it evolved from me, you know, participating in a talent show to being asked to sing on a Sunday to being part of the music team and then a fixture there which evolved to me coming to Spiritual Life Center, and it completely changed the trajectory of my life, musically and otherwise. So MPIH stands for Music Partners in Healthcare, and that is a um, nonprofit organization that places therapeutic musicians or certified music practitioners in facilities in the Sacramento and other areas. And they provide like the seed money, you know, for, for three months, kind of on the caveat that that facility will then pick up the tab because they'll see the value in it. So this organization, Music Partners in Healthcare, MPIH, is run by certified music practitioners. And um, so I am a certified music practitioner, AKA therapeutic musician. And what we do is we use the healing elements of sound to bring healing into a room. Somebody can heal in the midst of dying. You know, somebody can heal in the midst of being in an ICU room. So we use these elements of sound. We're trained 
to play for a lot of conditions, acute, non-acute, cognitive impairment, high pain, anxiety, actively dying. We come into a room, we don't have an agenda. It is really just to be open and to take the cues from the patient and to meet them where they are and match where they're at and then move them to a place where they can be more comfortable, they can breathe easier, they can calm down, they can have an emotional release, or they can take even their last breath and move from this world to the next. So what I find to be special and unique about being a therapeutic musician or certified music practitioner is, um, God, this just like touches me every time. It's really clear to me that my whole path has led me here. And even the times that I struggled and almost walked away from music because I was like, I don't know what to do. Um, the times that I struggled financially because I didn't have enough gigs or all of that I see now was preparing me for this place that I'm at now where I can really, really use this gift that I have to really help another human being through music. And I was all of it was preparation. There is nothing that touches me deeper than this work that I do when I walk into a room with somebody who is at their worst just being invited into that room is enough. Just my presence there is enough. And then to be able to watch them transform literally in front of my eyes, their heart rate going down, their oxygenation levels going up, their blood pressure going down, they're in pain and they stop moaning, they, they release their hands that you see the crease smooth out, they fall asleep or they have an emotional release or you, you see loved ones holding on to the person that's dying. Why I'm playing? <laughs> How can you do anything more special than that? You just can't, like, I've been given the honor. It's my job to make this difference, and, and I do. I feel like I've finally found my niche, so there's nothing more special. Annie, Jan, Carol, thank you for being the blessings that you are. Spiritual Life Center not only attracts people like this to make a positive difference in the world, but we also encourage it. We also want to make sure that we are giving all the support that they need to do what they do and to continue their work in the community. In recent years, the Spiritual Life Center Music Ministry has attracted some awesome new talent. As they opened their divine appointment with Spiritual Life Center, they have stepped into ways to be of further service to the community. Dominic Salazar-Turner taking on roles that he may not have imagined when he first came. Laurie Shiflett, who assists with vocal arrangements. And recently joined the AV team, so she can use her video editing skills, and we get to benefit from that. Dana Wendell keeps the heartbeat going on his drums. And of course, the always young at heart and constantly present star, Russell Brown. <laughs> For people like Russell and me, black and silver is not just the theme for the evening, it's our hair color. <laughs> In our 25 years, Spiritual Life Center has had six 
young people, six youth who became staff members, eight who became Unity regional leaders, three who became Unity international leaders. Yeah. yeah. Ira Mandela. <laughs> Ira became an apprentice to sound engineer Stu Boyer way back. He was 12 years old. And, and it was 2012, so that, now we know when you were born. Okay. <laughs> He, he assumed the lead of the AV team when Stu retired. He grew to encompass graphic design. He's part of the social media marketing team. He's part of the video production team. Thank you, Ira. Cameron Lawson kind of grew up here too, right? Cameron started in youth ed at 12 years old, joined the AV team, the podcast team, the video production team, served as youth of unity regional officer in 2017, international officer in 2018, and during the pandemic, when we could only do transformation on Zoom, he made that happen. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> Kian Chatton currently serves as accounting and office assistant. Thank you, Kian. <laughs> Sheila Davis, serving as junior sponsor, your ed and nursery teacher. All right. <laughs> Caitlin Rowe, served in youth ed, accounting, and website management. Becky McPhee, youth ed and nursery assistant, as well as youth of unity regional officer. <laughs> and then we have to brag a little on our youth of ministry regional officers. Aiden Willett, not only regional, but also international. <laughs> Liam Lawson, regional and international. And a hats off to Tatiana Barty, Kiki Crawford, and Renee Moskovitz. <laughs> nice work. Y'all are pretty good. by Becky McPhee. I recommend that you listen closely to the beautiful melody and the lyrics. It blows me away. She is a very old soul in a very young body. spoke the voice very deep within my 
actually <laughs> okay <laughs> and now the song is for those that are no longer with us <laughs> I have traveled somewhere over the rainbow
really do come true Someday I'll wish upon a star And wake up where the clouds are far Wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Where troubles melt like lemon drops, way above the chimney top.
let's all celebrate and have a good time. Celebration. We're gonna celebrate and have a good time. We know we are the ones to make a difference and inspire. Celebrate and have a good time. Celebration. We gonna celebrate and have a good time. We know we are the ones to make a difference and inspire everyone to light the world. Shut up. It's a celebration. Let's go light the world. Shut up. Let's celebrate. Let's go light the world. Shut up. We got a joy that comes from inside. Let's celebrate. Shine our light. Yeah, yeah. We got a joy that comes from inside. Celebrate, shine our light, yeah, yeah. We got a joy that comes from the side. Let's celebrate, shine our light, yeah, yeah. We got a joy that comes from the side. Let's celebrate, shine our light. Yeah, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. Let's go light the world. Shut up. Let's light the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go light the world. Shut up. Let's light the world. Let's go light the world. Shut up. Let's light the world. Yeah. that train. Whoever started that was great. <laughs> Did you have fun? I had no idea y'all could dance like that. That was fun to watch. Anna and I were reminiscing that many years ago, like maybe 15-ish, 12, and sang for the first time at Spiritual Life Center at Pioneer. And I was working on the service that Sunday. And I don't remember what you sang, but you just knocked us all over. Remember that? And everybody was cheering, and everybody was having an amazing time. And it was just, and then I had to get up. at like, well, what am I going to do? I don't know. <laughs> so I said, the first thing that came to my mind, which was, I used to think I wanted to sing like Aretha Franklin, but now I want to sing like Ann Roach. Neither of those has actually happened. This is the part of the program where we get to honor Reverend James Trapp. He is...
He is our 2023 honoree, and it's just really an honor to be up here to be able to brag about you a little bit. You know that Reverend James has been our senior minister for 11 years and counting. You probably also know that before he came to Spiritual Life Center, he served for seven years as CEO of Unity Worldwide Ministries at Unity Village in Kansas City. I don't know how you left that, but I'm glad you did. Before that, he had another ministry that was very successful, Unity of the, Unity of the Bay in Florida, and managed to get that congregation up to two, over 2,000 people. We're going to need a bigger room to do that here, but we're willing. He's also written two books that I hope you have read, Take Back Your Future and Powerful Beyond Measure. He has traveled to Spain, to Australia, to Ghana, to Nigeria, to South America as an ambassador and speaker of transformative spiritual principles. He has been instrumental in guiding this congregation to a thriving future through the Integral Ministries practice. Now, in a minute, or maybe two, <laughs> Reverend Deborah will come up here and present the award, but first, we have a couple of testimonials. Hello, my SLC family. I so wish I could be there with you tonight to celebrate this uh, momentous occasion, the 25th anniversary of Spiritual Life Center. It's hard to believe that 25 years ago this month that uh, a group of us, uh, Faith and myself and, and our founding board, uh, started the first uh, service at 24th and K, what we call the Little Church in Midtown Sacramento. And at that time, we knew we were in the middle of something wonderful, but we had no idea how it would unfold over the years and the impact that it would have on our community at large, um, on our own SLC family, and uh, also in the unity movement and in the world. So thank you so much for being a part of it um, for all these years. Thanks to James Trapp, one of Unity's most respected ministers who stepped up, took leadership, and is leading it into the unfolding of the new chapters of Spiritual Life Center. And thank you to the staff, past and present, all of the volunteers, our incredible music team, and to all of you for keeping the dream alive. Happy Anniversary Spiritual Life Center. Thank you. Thank you. And I want you all to remember this. You are loved beyond measure. And it's just not the same without you. God bless you, everyone. Have fun. Hola, hola, everyone. I'm coming to you from Ajijic, Mexico. And I'm so glad to be with you at this time celebrating Spiritual Life Center for 25 years. Love Spiritual Life Center. In fact, I've got a lot of people that I know there, some former <laughs> congregants are, are even there. Love it. So I'm so glad to be here. Also, I was asked to share a few words about James E. Trapp, 11 years of service at Spiritual Life Center. So I want to share a few things. <laughs> James. Wow. We've known each other for a while. Since 1992, when we entered ministerial school, I'm not quite sure if anybody in the room has been has known you as long as I've known you. One of the things that I just want to share is who you are and your character. So when we got together back in 1992, when we had hair and our bodies were a lot thinner, <laughs> you were the same James. What happened? You excelled so well because of your intellect and all of that, which was very good. And thank you, by the way, for helping me out some of those times. 
You remain humble, centered, and clear. And even though you receive an outstanding student, you were brilliant and all of that, you just remained humble. The next thing is when you went, when you left ministerial school in 1994, class of 94, you went to Unity on the Bay in Miami. Yes, you turned that ministry into a rocking, socking, spirit-filled ministry. It was Charles Fillmore with the Holy Ghost. It was awesome. <laughs> you remain humble, clear, focused. You celebrated, but it never went to your head. Love that. Then you became CEO, but the transition I saw when you left Unity on the Bay, become the CEO, I saw the tears in your eyes as you humbly let go of your ministry and turned to become the CEO. Saw that. Then, mm. Spiritual Life Center. Turned it into a rock and socking ministry. Oh my goodness, you up to that again, but I know you. Still remaining humble, true, always full of love. And so ladies and gentlemen, I would invite you to look into his eyes the next time you see him and see the depth of the love that this man has. James, I really love you, man. Spiritual life center. You're blessed to have him. God bless you. You have some good friends. Unity Worldwide Ministries being the future-oriented organization that they are, sent a certificate that blesses Spiritual Life Center of Sacramento November 1st, 2023 on our 90th anniversary. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I don't know if somebody called them or if they just figured it out on their own, but they did actually send another certificate with the right date. And they also sent a letter that I want to read to you. It's to Spiritual Life Center of Sacramento, on behalf of your colleagues and friends across the unity movement, we send our congratulations on this very special occasion honoring Spiritual Life Center of Sacramento's 25th anniversary. Truly, this marks a joyful celebration of the long years of loving service that have been provided to your community for generations. And then uh, part of the prayer from James Dillard Freeman, for above all, love is a sharing. Love is a power. Love is a change that takes place in our own heart. Sometimes it may change others, but always it changes us. Know that our prayers of love and appreciation will be with Spiritual Life Center of Sacramento when you mark this momentous occasion in the months of September and October and November as you and your members look back across the years and ahead to continuing years of vibrant ministry, we celebrate with you. God bless you richly now and always. Signed with abundant blessings from Reverend Shad Groverland, President and CEO of Unity Worldwide Ministries. And this, which you'll get to see in the, in the lobby afterwards, is the second certificate with the correct date.
So the next thing we're going to do is ask Reverend James and Reverend Deborah to come up here together. Oh boy. <laughs> so I was asked to say a few words about my personal journey with you. And first of all, I don't know what I can say that Reverend Jim didn't say, except thank you for taking in the orphan New Thought minister <laughs> who had nowhere to go, no idea what to do with the ordination. And this man has a sense about people that I don't know if you all recognize, but he calls it his spidey sense. And I have never seen anybody quite get the measure of someone in such a short marriage uh, time. And so, of course, I'm very flattered. I complain about all these, uh, you know, about where I am. But honestly, James, if it weren't for you, I don't know what I would be doing. And I am so very grateful for not only the way you've mentored me and supported me, but the entire staff. I have never worked for anybody who's like you. And it, we are all so honored to be a part of your life and, and part of your staff. did not play the role of a victim. See, a victim has an unforgiveness story. See, I always like to say this time of year, a lot of people, no one here, of course, they like to play victim. They like to stay on the cross. But as I like to say, please get off the cross. Somebody else could use the wood. Say, you know, I just don't know what to do with my life. Imagine, if you will, if the, the mind of God force would say, uh, let there be, uh, let me see what's going to happen here. Uh, let me see, I'm not quite sure what's going to go on here. No. In the mind of God, it said there was a definite spiritual intention. Fortunately, not every thought that we have matters. At least in my life, I'm glad that they all don't matter. Because you know, sometimes I wonder, man, I'm glad that I'm not like in a huge arena of a thousand people and they can read every thought that I have. That would not be a good thing. <laughs> what I realize is that the challenges that we have, we most of the time have attracted in our life, you know, on some level or another, maybe not consciously. And I realize that the Spirit of God, this all-knowing presence, this all-powerful presence, it don't know nothing about our problems. We do. And we, sometimes we go over and over and over again, but if we begin to think differently, we can have those problems return to the nothingness from which they have come never to exist again. So when we 
we talk about supply, claim what's yours, can we really handle it? Put it another way, you want to ask, am I ready to handle a life of sacred, what I call blissably? I've used the word blissably. You know, they talk about discipline in life, but blissably, what, what is blissably? Blissably, blissably, blissably is really the discipline of the heart. It's the discipline of the spirit. It allows us to carry on more bliss in our life. It means we're developing a discipline that allows us to stay in that faith energy, stay in that faith atmosphere, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the situation. We go forth anyway. No this, my little old that, my little old job, my little old paycheck. No, we don't want to speak like that. We're here to be masters of God's infinite supply. Let's claim that good now. Just affirm with me, all that God is, I am. I'm ready to receive my good. I claim my good now. It is done. Thank you. Or such a quiet man. <laughs> so, Reverend James, I would like love I, to um, give you this award in gratitude for everything that you have contributed to Spiritual Life Center and all the people here and what you still will contribute. You are such a blessing to us. Woo! Ooh. You know, one of the things I would say that, you know, I, I'm not really into accolades. But I was thinking, you know, what I might share. And I was, you know, reflecting upon the words that Becky had in her song. I think something to the effect, you know, uh, how do you go about keeping on living when life has got you down? What do you believe? What do you think? And I was thinking about the very first time that I walked into a Unity Church. And I was going through that dark night of the soul. And that day was perfect for me to be there. Because uh, I always say that the minister that day was speaking specifically to me. Someone had given him my file to prepare the talk. <laughs> and it led me to a journey. And that journey led me to you know, ministerial school, which I've always been the reluctant minister. It's not something that I jumped into and said, oh yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. I know some people say, I can't wait to be a minister. I was not that kind of person. <laughs> but uh, the universe sometimes pushes you in directions that you don't wanna go personally, or you feel that you don't, but it's yours to do and to answer that call. And it has been a journey. You know, that led to me back to the community which I came out of and then ultimately, you know, at Unity Worldwide Ministries and here at Spiritual Life Center. And there were some great things along the way, but I believe the most important thing was kind of a little reflected when I was speaking to Bill Skipworth kind of uh, earlier tonight. He was sharing that uh, when he had a job, he was used to be the person that put out the daily word, I think, on a counter and there were some guys there that were kind of, my interpretation, kind of rough and tumble kind of individuals. And one day the daily word wasn't out there on the, on the counter. And the guy came into Bill and said, where's the daily word? <laughs> <clears throat> and so as he shared, you, you, we, we never know 
you know, how someone will be affected. And I would say for me that the greatest experience that I get is when someone maybe comes in contact with a community that has what we have to offer. And maybe it's a song that's sung, a prayer that's prayed, a meditation, some words that are spoken. And there's a light bulb that lights up where they remember who they really are. And then something magical begins to happen in their life because they're never the same again. They never look at the world differently again. They still have challenges. They still have problems, as we all will do in our life experience. But they see it from a different perspective. You know, there is a, a spiritual insight that happens. So we, we're never quite the same. And I, oftentimes I think people run into folks who come to places like Spiritual Life Center and they wonder, you know, how is it that you are able to navigate through life in, in a way that others can't? You know, despite the challenges, there's a sense of joy and a sense of understanding that you can somehow get through it and you don't let it get you down. And I think when someone has that happen into my, in their life and they can share that, that is the greatest thrill that I get because somebody else got something that made a difference in their life because I know how much it made in my own. And uh, I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> we love you, James. And uh, I can't think of anything better to do. So I thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for all that you have done and continue to do and the work that, you know, others have done in the community to the greater part of the world, you know, Carol and, and Jan and, and uh, who else do we share? Oh, uh, Anne, of course, and, uh, you know, what Becky and all the youth are doing. We are making a difference and, you know, in our part of the universe, and if enough people do it, that's when we begin to change the world in the twinkling of an eye. That's what we're here to do, and uh, we're all part of that. And I appreciate every one of you. Thank you. Before we leave, we have to thank James about 50 more times. <laughs> that was only 35. Could you wrap that up, please? We have to thank our sponsors, because sponsors raised over $16,000 for, for Spiritual Life Center through this event. And again, I want to remind you to look for the people who are wearing the Lays Fund Mission staff volunteers and, uh, and say how to do to them before you leave. All of you who continue to support Spiritual Life Center, this vision and this this mission that started 25 years ago, 25 years and counting. It's something that you've done with time, talent, and treasure, and I hope that you will continue to do that. It's an important thing. None of this happens without people in the seats. Soul Light Connection has one more affirmative sing-along. They want you to take part in this. And then you get to go out in the evening and be the bright lights that you are and make it all happen. Actually, you get to stick around and dance a little while. Okay? Right? And this is a sing-along. And I want to say one more thing before we start singing. Even though Paula is not on stage with us, she did a lot of behind-the-scenes work. She's here tonight. Woo! Thank you, Paula. Affirming your healing. Woo! Yeah. Love you, Paula. I am a light. I am a light in this world. 